you were actually ready to come back before WrestleMania 20. Can you talk about that? Like, so you're out for over a year. You were not. You had a lot of momentum, and then you're out, and then you're now you're ready to come back. What's the the thought process? Yeah, you know, before I got injured, um, I I really felt like I was I was firing on all cylinders. I was I was wrestling Kurt Angle and having those series of matches. Wrestling Eddie Guerrero, having those series of matches. You know, Ray and I are having the the tag team match against you know Ben Juan Angle at at I think it was No Mercy that I still have people ask me about and. And kind of that whole series, I team with Hogan, I'm working Jericho, really, really kind of in the pocket and the groove of where I needed to be. You know, Paul uh, Heyman said, you know, I want you to be my sting. I, I felt like that was happening. I really did. And then we get the news about my neck. So, so you get the, the double fusion and, you know, I, I figure, okay, when I come back, right, right where I left off, cool. And the audience didn't want that. And I got put on Raw, which I are, you know, initially I wanted to go back to SmackDown. You know, I didn't want to go to Raw because I, I never really liked the feel on Raw. I liked the feel on SmackDown. Scott Steiner was still on Raw. Yes. <laughs> um, and I just remember thinking, uh-uh, I don't know about that. And then I came back and I just felt like the audience, they weren't there the way they were. And I don't know if it was a Raw Smackdown difference, I don't know if it was just that timing. And when it really, really hit home and was solidified for me was my first time going back to my hometown, going back to Toronto. Haven't been there in you know just about two years, coming back from Spinal Fusion. I'm the Intercontinental Champion, I'm the hometown boy, I'm wrestling Chris Jericho and Batista in a triple threat match. And I walked out and they booed. And I went, you sons of bitches. <laughs> this is my hometown and you're booing me. Not only are you just, you're not cheering me, but you're actually booing me. So I went, okay. I got to the back and I said, we gotta make a change. I gotta turn heel. And that's what they wanna see. They're, they're tired of seeing this edge. We need to give them a reason to boo now. And from there, then it was, you know, I needed something to bite into in terms of, you know, uh, some form of reality in this. And, and that, that made me angry. So I thought, I'll use that. And I'll use that anger and channel it toward the character and have this character be absolutely obsessed with winning the world title. Because at that point, it was the only thing like I felt, I felt like I hadn't done. So that became, you know, kind of the, the driving force behind kind of the, the psychotic edge character, which eventually it led to, um, you remember those pay-per-views, Taboo Tuesday or Cyber Sunday, you know, the ones where they would vote as to who would be put in certain matches. The voting was legitimate. And we had, I believe it was Taboo Tuesday, and, and it was going to be three people that were... Uh, voted on to face Triple H for the heavyweight title. It was Chris Benoit, it was me, and it was Shawn Michaels. He could, he could barely work, and, but he's a baby face. I'm a heel, Benoit's a baby face. So I was like, oh man. It turns out that if I had won the voting that night, I would have won the world title. Shawn won with 51%. And I was like 2% behind. I just thought, son of a bitch. <laughs> okay, just it, it, it further fueled it, it, the character. And I thought, okay, right. I just it put a bigger chip on my shoulder and it just made me wanna get there, get there, get there, get there and try and prove it. And that was really what that whole incarnation of the Edge character pre-rated R was all about.